الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم تسليما كثيرا أما بعد All praise due to Allah and His praise and blessings be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his family, his companions and his followers until the day of judgment I bear witness that Allah is the only one worthy of worship and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam his last and final messenger My dear brothers and sisters, uh, first before I start the khutbah, yester, last week a couple of people talked to me about some of the attendees, they take their mask down, they, they put it under their nose, you know, and they don't uh, respect the fact that there's a lot of people around them um, and it makes them very uncomfortable being here while people are not following these rules. And I know mask, I hope by now we kind of get used to it, uh, but um, I hope that you bear with us, especially in the place, in a closed indoor place like this, that we keep our mask uh, as long as we are in the masjid, especially when people are around us. Um, because this is by far a common recommendation from people who are specialized in, you know, um, uh, or the people who we seek their advice when it comes to the this pandemic and how to transfer between people and so forth and also as I'm sorry also for the inconvenience for some of you when they are in chairs or higher chair or lower chairs just take it as a rule of thumb you cannot have any objects in people's way out when it comes to the exit fire door it just for your own safety it's for your own you know um, uh, for your, for your own good. So uh, I'm sorry that we keep saying these things, but inshallah, uh, we kind of, you know, if you want the chair, you want to sit, you can put it on this side. Inshallah, we'll make sure also the people who organize the place for salah to ensure that all chairs on this side of the masjid. You know, my brothers and sisters, this is a very interesting year. It's a year where we lost so many scholars. And so far, we lost over 40 scholars in this year. Not only scholars, but also friends, community members, relatives, peoples, the death today, we hear about the death every day. It just became a number. You know, 2,000, 2,500, this and this, and the number keep growing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us. You know, death does not differentiate between a scholar and, an, and, and, a, and a person who not educated young or old we just buried a, two young men last yesterday in their early 20s rich or poor men or women righteous or non-righteous muslim or non-muslim death has just happened to everybody each and every soul shall taste death in nabi sallallahu alaihi said to muhammad sallallahu and he's the best of all humanity you are going to die, and they're all going to die. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Jibreel came to him and he said, Ya Muhammad, Ahbib man shi'at fa innaka mufariqah. Ya Muhammad, love whomever you want, whoever you wish. At one day, you will leave that person. You will be apart, departing from each other. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajeem, اعلموا انما الحياه الدنيا لعب وله وزينه وتفاخر بينكم وتكاثر في الاموال والاولاد كمثل غيث اعجب الكفار نباته ثم يهيج فتراه مصفرا ثم يكون حطاما وفي الآخرة عذاب شديد ومغفرة من الله ورضوان وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور Know that the life of this world is but a major and divergent amusement and divergent and adornment and boosting to one another and competition 
an increase of wealth and children. Then Allah give the example, so that's what this life is all about. Then he said, people give an example of this life. While you're so busy seeking these pleasures and fulfilling these desires, Allah said, like the example of the rain, of a rain, who resulting plant growth pleases the, the, the tellers or the farmers when the, the, gro- the grass and the flowers and the plants grow. It dries and you see it turn yellow. Then it becomes scattered, debris. In no time, the cycle of the, the life cycle of plants and flowers are very short. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but after that, the problem was with death is that leads to the next life, which is the hereafter. And in the hereafter is severe punishment and forgiveness from Allah and approval. And what is the worldly life except the enjoyment of delusion? الدُّنْيَا إِلَّا مَتَاعُ الْغُرُورِ الدُّنْيَا دَارُ صُدْقٍ لِمَنْ صَدَقَهَا This life is a place it's true for those who are truthful. وَدَارُ نَجَاتٍ لِمَنْ فَهِمَهَا And it's a means of surviving for those who understand the nature of it. وَدَارُ غِنًا لِمَنْ أَخَذَ مِنْهَا And it's a means of increasing and growing for those who will take advantage of it. الدُّنْيَا مَهْبَطُ وَحْيِ اللَّهِ وَمُصَلَّى أَنْبِيَائِهِ In this life, the Prophet and Messenger lived, received the revelations, worshipped Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَهِيَ مَتْ جَرُوا أَوْلِيَائِهِ And it is the place where people, where the awliya, the righteous people, basically able to increase their ibadah, increase their goodness. So when they meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah will be pleased with them. Ali radiallahu anh said that. وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ وَفِي قِرَاءَ وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْحَقِّ بِالْمَوْتِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, ultimately, with the truth of death will come the truth. Or with, the, uh, with death will come the truth. This is what you were trying to escape. وَجَاءَتْ سَكْرَةُ الْمَوْتِ بِالْحَقِّ ذَلِكَ مَا كُنْتَ مِنْهُ تَحِيد. It comes with the truth. When you see death, when you see the angel of death, that's the ultimate truth. When you see the angel of death, you will know the truth of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala promised you. When you see the angel of mercy, you'll need the truth of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy. When you see the angel of punishment, you will know the truth of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warning, warned you. When you see your grave as a place from Jannah or for hellfire, you will know that what Allah said to you was the truth. When you see your deeds in your grave, waiting for you, you will know the truth of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have promised you. That what you're trying to escape. That the thing that you try not to think about. Rahimallah al-Hasan al-Basri qal al-mawt huwa al-yaqeen al-ladhi la yashukku fihi ahad. Everybody knows that they will die. Yet, we all treat death as the most doubtful thing. Lakinnahu al-shakku al-ladhi la ahada yuqeenu bih. Kalla idha balagat al-taraqi وَقِيلَ مَنْ رَاقْ وَقِيلَ مَنْ رَاقْ وَظَنَّ أَنَّهُ الْفِرَاقْ تراق يعني الترقوة وَقِيلَ مَنْ رَاقْ يعني يطببه يرقيه أو مَنْ رَاقْ هَلْ تُرْقَى رُوحُهُ بِمَلَائِكَةِ الرَّحْمَةِ أَوْ بِمَلَائِكَةِ الْعَذَابِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said but no, but no be aware of the day when the soul reach the collarbone as it leaves and it will be said, is there is a healer? Is there is someone can heal that person, give ruqya to that person? Or who will elevate that soul? The angel of mercy or the angel of punishment? And they deny person, uh, and the denying person realize it is their time to depart. وَقِيلَ مَنْ رَاقْ وَظَنَّ أَنَّهُ الْفِرَاقْ and then their feet are tied together in a shroud. When you put the kafan on the dead person and you tied their legs together, and 
at that moment, on that day, they will be driven to their Lord alone. Just the angel taking themselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to meet their destiny, to meet their reckoning day, their day of judgment. Man ma taqamat qiyamatuhi, yaqul al Nabi sallallahu Anybody die, their judgment day start. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that each and every one of us has a moment. When it comes, there is no moment after that. ستفضي بك الأيام في بعض مرها إلى ساعة لا ساعة لك بعدها ولكل أمة أجل فإذا جاء أجلهم لا يستأخرون ساعة ولا يستقدمون In Surah Al-A'raf, for each and every one of you, for each and every community, for each group, Ummah could mean all this. There is an appointment term. When their term arrives, they cannot neither delay it for a moment, nor could they advance it. When your moment of death comes, that's it. No matter where you at, أَيْنَمَا تَكُونُ يُدْرِكُمُ الْمَوْتُ وَلَوْ كُنْتُمْ فِي بُرُوجٍ مُشَيَّدًا فِي سورة النساء Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, wherever you may be, death will overcome you, even if you were in a, 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 in a fortress towers. قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهِ تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهِ بِالْأَطِبَّاءِ بِالصِّحَّةِ بِكَذَا بِكَذَا فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ ثُمَّ تُرَدُّونَ إِلَىٰ عَالِمِ الْغَيْبِ وَالشَّهَادَةِ فَيُنَبِّئُكُمْ بِمَا كُنْتُمْ تَعْمَلُونَ In Surah Al-Jumu'ah, say the death you are running away from will eventually come to you. Will eventually come to you. You run away from it by staying healthy, by seeing doctors, by having good, you know, health insurance, whatever it is. It's still at one point in your life. You might push it back. You might. That's in the end of the day. You will meet your destiny, which is death. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn As said, "The Nabi sallam passed by me while I'm working with my family in my house. Then the Nabi sallam told me, 'Al Amr asra'u min dalik.'" It is much faster than what you think. And it is much shorter this life than what you think. The Prophet ﷺ was not trying to tell him, don't worry about your home, or don't worry about life, don't worry about collecting money, don't worry about working or studying hard. That's not the point. The point is, you cannot ever lose sight of where your destiny is. Nothing from whatever you are running after in this dunya will benefit you at, at your death except your good deeds. Except whatever you have prepared for that day. You know, i give you a good example. After a good day, accomplishing a lot of good things in your day, a day where you accomplish so many things, you do a lot of good things. How do you feel when you go to sleep at the end of that day? So happy. That's how exactly how you will die if you're alive like that day. Filled with accomplishments. Filled with great things that you have done in your life. And in the end of your life, you know what? I'm happy. When you look back, I remember all these great things that Alhamdulillah I was able to do. When we look back, I said, you know what? This young man died as a Muslim, died as a mu'min, died as a muwahid, died as a musalli, died as a person who fulfilled the obligations of Islam. He did his hajj, he did his umrah, he did his zakat. She did her, you know, she fulfilled the obligation that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala asked her to do. That's why the person who understand, who understand the nature of this life, understand the nature of death. And those who don't understand what this life is about, they cannot understand what this death is about. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, اجعلنا وياكم من المعتبرين وان يرزقنا واياكم حسن الخاتمة. اقول ما سمعتم واستغفر الله لي ولكم فاستغفروا. Alhamdulillah, wa ahdahu salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiyya ba'dahu wa ba'd. As I said just last week, just last week, in one day, four scholars in different places in the Muslim world died. Great scholars in du'a. One in Saudi Arabia, one in, in Lebanon, one in Jordan, and uh, um, one in Turkey. All of them are great scholars in hadith and fiqh and etc. Here in our community, 
you know, shocking for so many young people yesterday. We have seen how the community, you know, was shocked by the death of a young man. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all of them and raise their level in Jannah. You know, this is, as I said, it's, it's something will happen to each and every one of us. The main point of death, my brothers and sisters, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us in the Quran. Life and death is about this. So he will see who will respond in the best way. When you hear somebody die, somebody born, you think about your life, you think about your death, what that, how it impacts you, how you react to that, how you will change your life accordingly. Have you noticed when we make Salat al-Janazah, and we pray Salat al-Janazah, we say, Allahumma ghfir li hayyina wa mayyitina. We start with the, may Allah forgive the living one, then the dead. Saghirina wa kabirina wa dhakrana wa unthana wa shahidina wa ghaibina. Allahumma man ahitahu min nafaihir al-Islam. You make a lot of dua first for yourself and for the living one. Then the dead one comes after that. Ta'ajjab, yani yasbiq al-dua wa al-i'tibar lil-hayy qabla al-mayyit. You, th- you make all this dua for the living one, then the dead one comes later on. Oh Allah, if you let us live less upon Islam, if we, Iman, if we die, we die upon Islam. Don't, give, don't make us fitna after his death. Don't take our ajr away from, from this. You know, it's all about you in the beginning. Then after that, you start praying for the dead person. Allahumma ghfir lah, warham, wa'afi, wa'fu anhu, akrib nuzla, wassi' mudkhala, wa'asilhu bil ma'i, etc. Why? Because death is about first for you to reflect, for you to benefit from it. It's just not a, a moment of sadness and just that's it. It doesn't really change anything in your life. As-sa'id man wa'idha bi ghayrih, wa shaqi man wa'idha bi nafsi. Lucky one, smart people who learn from other people. But those not smart are the people who wait until they experience in themselves. You know, I'm worried that some people so terrified from death that they experience death so many times before the real death arrive. The point is not just to be terrified from death. I think you should be balanced. You should worry about how you will die more than when you're going to die. You should worry about in what state you will die, what you will be accomplished upon your death, then when my death will come. That thinking of death should motivate you to be good, to be better, to do your best. You know, um, because sometimes we have to realize that death is not the greatest losses in our life. The greatest losses in our life many times are the great things that dies inside us while we're living or while we are alive. Abu, Abu Hazm kana yaqul, one of the great scholars among the tabi'een used to say, look at anything that you don't like death to arrive to you while you are doing it and leave it. Anything that you don't want death comes while doing it, leave it. قَالْ كُلْ مَا كَرِهْتَ أَنْ تَمُوتَ عَلَيْهِ اتْرُكْ Which it means he meant all the sins and the things that is not, not beneficial. Death is not the end, it's a beginning of a new life. That's why we say death is not the inhalation of the soul. Actually, it is a transformation. You go to another life, which is the life after death. You know, death make you think about the big things and overlook the thing that will not benefit you. The fight and the argument and the anger and the, and the personal problems that you have. So you just leave it behind you. Death is coming. There's bigger things to think about. There is many things I notice whenever we always participate in janaza, quickly from this week. And one of the things that I want to make sure that it is clear is this issue of delaying the janaza. And it became so irritating, delaying the janaza. You know, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Asri'u bil janaza, rush to bury your dead. It's not when before you de- bury the person. That's not the time for lectures. Obviously not the time for fundraising. It's not the time for talking about accomplishments. It's not the time to talk about people. 
It's it's as rush as rush to the to, to, to the Jannah. Bury the finish the salah, take the person, bury them. And it became so common to the extent that people at the funeral uh, at the cemetery they delay the barrier because somebody want to give me a khutbah. Habibi, if somebody cannot take a lesson from this scene, your words are useless. But don't delay the person's janazah just because somebody want to give a khutbah. Or just want to make dua for the person. Bury him, then make as dua as much as you want. Pray janazah, then talk as much as you want. And oh my God, you take like five minutes to explain Salat al-Janazah, which is every... Um, if we are in a community where there's a lot of like new Muslims or people don't know, at least make it very short. But not like so many details and to delay the janazah. I mean, to that extent of that few moments is not the right way to do. Taif Sheikh, we delay it because sometimes they delay the salah in janazah because you want larger number to arrive. Yeah, if somebody came late, they can pray janazah on the person in the cemetery. If the hour after people finish the janazah and there's still the janazah on the ground and he's in the back, he can pray the janazah. If you arrive to the masjid, let's say you miss Salat al-Dhuhr and you came while they're praying the janazah. Pray janazah, then pray Dhuhr after that or Asr after that. You can catch the janazah, but don't delay the janazah. And this is something you need to be, you know, people more educated about it. And in that janazah, also you notice that a lot of people on the funeral, when they bury the person, they start talking, giving lectures, giving talk, reading Quran, whatever they do. The sunnah is to make dua for the person. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, now he's asked, he's uh, is been asked or questioned by the angel. So make dua for him. Do whatever you want after. But at this moment, what this dead person wants the most, benefit him the most, to make dua for him. Not to read Quran, not to give khutbah, not to give lecture. And I hope these two things can be clear and we can, you know, be aware of it. And, and the problem is during the incident itself, when, when you bury someone, you cannot open your mouth. You cannot talk because you don't want to have a fight in such critical moments. So next time when you go to someone, hey, stop this, Sheikh Walid said, it's not you have to be smart. We have to educate people prior to the incident because inside the or the time of burial, people are very hyper and emotional is very high. You can't, you can't, you can't do stuff like that. Unless you are very well known, scholar, respected, and you say something that people will listen. But this is something just for us to be aware of. Make sure that you have your wasiyah written. You know, who knows what, when the time comes. Make sure that you write your will. Make sure you put in your will something to be giving to the fuqara. If you, alhamdulillah, have a good amount of money, you know, not necessarily your kids will follow your full steps, footsteps. You know, make sure that you put some of that for the, for the sadaq ahjariya after you to put a portion of it, as long as not more, not more than one third of your wealth. Uh, and, and a good advice for your children, good advice for your family, so they can reflect upon after you passed away. They can read that and they can reflect upon these words. And if you ever need help, alhamdulillah, we have three mashayikh here can help you in anything of that nature, uh, to write something for your children, to share with them, you know, some advice that you want to leave or how to do your inheritance or stuff like that. We have host also some uh, workshops and there's a plenty of resources exist to help you to do that well according to Sharia and also to be legal. In the end, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring us يعني, all to take the best advantage of this life, to live in goodness and to die upon goodness and to live upon Iman and to die upon Islam and to live upon taqwa and to die as muhideen. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make our end of our life as the best of our days and the best of our deeds upon our death. O oh Allah, forgive all those who passed away. Forgive their sins and raise their level in Jannat al Naim. O oh Allah, we ask you to forgive to our parents and to raise their levels in Jannah and our family and to protect all of us, protect our health, protect our wealth, protect our community and the whole world from the evil of this pandemic and from all kind of evil. Ya Arham ar Rahimin. Ya Rabbi Qina wa Ahlina wa Anfusina wa Dhuriyatina wa Amwalina. 
شر الفتن ما ظهر منها وما بطن اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من اللهم إنا نعوذ بك من الهم والغم والحسد نعوذ بك يا ذا الجلال والإكرام من كل ذي شر نعوذ بك من الشر كله عاجله وآجله ونسألك من الخير كله عاجله وآجله واللي علينا خيارنا وأبن عنا شرارنا يا ذا الجلال والإكرام اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم تسليما كثيرا وقوموا للصلاة يرحمكم الله الله أكبر الله أكبر أشهد أن 